So today I'm making some fermented plant juice using bananas. This will make a concentrated high potassium feed that can be diluted at a rate of one to 1,000. So you will need some ripe bananas, um, some raw brown sugar, I'm using molasses uh, sugar here, nice dark molasses sugar, some kitchen roll and an elastic band. I use a glass kilner jar, that's a two litre jar and a stainless steel mixing bowl, scales, a sharp knife and a chopping board. So I cut the ends off the bananas because these are quite hard and just use all the flesh and all the skin. I basically just slice them up as you can see into little circles and um, I'm going to go for as close as I can get to a kilo because I have a kilo of sugar so Whichever banana brings me closest to a kilo is when I'll stop. And then we'll mix in the sugar. So I think this banana is going to be the one that brings me as close as possible to the one kilo mark. So that's 941 or two grams, so that'll do. So now I'm going to add in the molasses sugar I like to use this sugar because it's, it's a lovely dark rich sugar and it, it's, I just prefer it, I think it, it's the best one to use. So I will add in exactly the same weight as I had in bananas, basically 942 grams and you can use if you have a little bit left over, you can use a little bit just to cap it off because you will occasionally get some mould forming on the top when the, when the fruit rises to the top of the ferment. So there we go, that's equal amounts sugar and banana. And it's now time to get your hands dirty. This is a bit of a mucky, mucky part of the procedure, but it needs to be done. You just need to massage the sugar and banana together. Just give it a real good sort of squish together and, and the sugar will start to absorb all the moisture out of the banana. It doesn't take very long, maybe 30 seconds to a minute or two. Just give it a good squeeze until it's nicely mixed and basically there's, there's no dry sugar. So that should do, that's nicely mixed together now, there's no sugar granules, it's all liquid. And I'm now just going to basically spoon it into the kilner jar. You don't need the lid because you don't, don't seal it. You just use a bit of kitchen roll with a elastic band over the top once it's filled. So if you've got any drips down the side of the jar on the outside and the inside and um, what I tend to do is, is to get a bit of white vinegar I'll, I'll just rub off the excess with some kitchen roll and then I'll get a bit of roll kitchen roll with um, white vinegar on it and just clean around the edge of the jar this just helps to stop any sort of bacteria that may be around the rim um, from getting on there and, and making excess molds and things like that it just it just sort of keeps it all a bit cleaner and tidier So 
So once we've got the jar nice and clean on the outside and around the inner rim, just put a piece of kitchen roll over the top. This just allows it to breathe, secure it in place with a, an elastic band. And then just put it somewhere, room temperature, somewhere dark in the back of a cupboard or something for, I tend to leave mine between seven to 10 days um, just to make sure it's fully fermented. So this is 10 days later and it doesn't seem to be doing anything else. So it's now time to remove the solids and to filter the final product. So for this, we need some clean jars. I've just got some old sauce jars, um, a bowl and a spoon and a funnel. This one's got a, a mesh filter in the bottom. And what I basically do is I just remove the top there is a little bit of mold on the top of this one because because the fruit rose to the top and I did forget to put a cap of sugar on the top, but it's not a problem. I'll just sc scoop it out with the spoon into the bowl and the solids can go straight onto the um, compost heap. Or what I actually did with this, this lot of solids was put it into another jar with some water and a bit more molasses and I added some of my lactobacillus bacteria to it just to ferment it further before using it as a as a soil drench on some of my courgettes and pumpkins. So basically just remove as many solids as you can, try not to mix everything back into the, the finished solution at the bottom, the dark liquid. And then once you've removed all of these solids, you can just put it through the funnel and into the, the clean jars. These jars have just been thoroughly washed with soap. I haven't worried to sterilize them or anything. They're just thoroughly washed and clean. So because the liquid is quite thick, it does take a considerable time to get through this funnel. So once I've filled the funnel, I tend to just walk off and leave it for an hour and come back and see how it's doing. But this did take over an hour to get all this liquid through the funnel. So it's a bit of a waiting game at this point. So after patiently waiting for an hour or so, I've ended up with nearly two full jars of the concentrate. Now, as I said, this can be used at a one to 1,000 dilution rate, so one milliliter per liter of water, either as a soil drench or as a foliar spray. And it should remain shelf stable for at least a year, if not quite a bit longer. So that's it all done. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and we will see you next time. Take it easy.